We did a project on nonlinear optics. Nonlinear optics is the science of materials that do not behave linearly when exposed to light. And one of the major applications of nonlinear optics is a phenomenon known as second harmonic generation. Essentially, second harmonic generation is a phenomenon in which certain crystals, which exhibit nonlinear behaviors, will combine two photons to form one new photon when exposed to light at a certain angle. This allows the production of some frequency of light from a source of half the frequency. So, for example, there's handheld laser pointers known as diode pumped solid state lasers. These lasers essentially have a first component, which is a diode laser. It produces laser radiation at a wavelength of 1064 nanometers. And then this light is shown into a special frequency doubling crystal, which creates the second harmonic generation. And that produces light at 532 nanometers, which rather conveniently is green light. And since our eyes are most sensitive to green light, that makes these lasers very useful. So for our project, what we did specifically is we obtained monopotassium phosphate, which is a chemical that when crystallized functions as a nonlinear optical element, and in particular, it does second harmonic generation or frequency doubling. In fact, it is most commonly used in that exact application for green laser pointers. What we did is we took bulk powder, uh, reagent grade powder, and we mixed it with water and uh, boiled it down so that we obtained a supersaturated solution and then we let it evaporate and we poured off the excess, which gave us fairly large crystals of monopotassium phosphate. Then we took these crystals and we attempted to produce second harmonics in the UV range by inputting light at 670 nanometers from a cheap laser pointer. This would be then halved to produce 335 nanometer light, which would go into a container of tonic water. Tonic water contains quinine, and as such, it uh, produces blue light when exposed to UV light in that frequency range, uh, around 350 nanometers. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, this did not work. Uh, likely it's because the laser itself is very low power and the resultant beam of frequency doubled light was extremely faint. It would have been better if we had had an infrared laser to shoot into the crystal because then it would have produced visible light and it's much easier to see the direct effect there. And here's a video demonstration of when we tried this, but it did not work, as I said earlier. It might also have been that the crystals were too small or that they were not clear enough because our crystals were not especially large or transparent. There were some transparent bits, especially at the tips of them, but otherwise they were not uh, the highest quality crystals. Anyway, here's the video. So for our project, we we created some crystals out of, out of uh, KDP, which is uh, which would theoretically shift the frequency of a laser of the laser light shining through it. So we condensed we we made a solution of the KDP supersaturated because we heated it up to a higher temperature, and then we cooled it down and we got condensation over time, as you can see here. Uh, some of the crystals that were produced were not attached to the beaker and. You know, we could then use them and attempt to shine them, shine a laser light through them. And at least in theory, if we do this, I'm going to turn off the lights. If, at least in theory, if we do this, we should be able to get some sort of 
uh, blue fluorescence because this should shift from 670 nanometers to 335 nanometers in terms of you know, double the frequency so half the wavelength. Unfortunately, we were never we weren't able to get the frequency to, we were not able to get ultraviolet light to shine through the tonic water, which is what's in here, and fl make it fluoresce. So this, you know, we didn't get any positive results. This is probably due to the fact that we didn't have a high enough frequency, a high enough power laser, or just us not getting the correct angle.